Hello my dears and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing our next video in our knitting series where we are knitting trimmed with roses from A Stitch in Time Volume 2. Uh, when we last left off we were working on our increases and then knitting through the body of our beautiful cardigan working on the front two panels simultaneously and we have completed all of that. We have all of our increased stitches here. We have our two side panels that we are working on. And now we are working on decreasing our sweater, decreasing at the front or the insides to create neckline shaping. And then we're going to be working on decreasing around the arm to create arm's eye shaping so that we can make room to put our beautiful sleeves into our sweater. So as you can see here, I have got all of my stitch markers on the sides where I increased my stitches. And then I've moved to adding stitch markers to the front section or where the cardigan will button up so I can see where my decreases have happened. I have mentioned this in previous videos. I'll mention it again, just in case you're new, I really love using stitch markers. I feel like they are very helpful to make sure that I don't miss any of my increases, any of my decreases. Um, it also helps me count the number of rows that I have to ensure that I get what the pattern is telling me to get. We can get on a roll, we can get going, and it can be very easy to lose my place. And so I really find that having these stitch markers is very, very handy. Now, some of you may be looking at this or looking at your own work at home on the sweaters you're working on and thinking, oh my goodness, it doesn't look like the picture. Did I do something wrong? Was my swatch wrong? You've gotten far enough into your pattern then you could start to see the sides are curling and the bottom is kind of bunched up. And I'm gonna tell you, keep going. Nothing ever looks the same straight off the needles as it does in the pictures in the beautiful knitting books that we buy because these have all been blocked. So even if yours doesn't look exactly like the picture yet, don't worry, keep following the instructions, keep going through. When we get to the end, we'll work on blocking and I promise it's gonna turn out really beautifully. So for today, let's start looking at what decreases look like. For our cardigan, we are decreasing along the neckline here and so for the left side of our cardigan, we are gonna want a slant that goes from right to left. On our right side, we're gonna want a slant that goes from left to right, which are going to allow the neckline to come up and around the top of the collar area. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to larger needles and a darker yarn so that we can go ahead and review what those two stitches will look like. One of them is going to be a slip slip knit to decrease. The other one is going to be the K2 tog or knit two together knitting through the front loop. Each of these stitches decreases just one which is what the pattern calls for but they each create a slightly different effect. One of them creates that slanting to the right, the other the slanting to the left. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. All right my dears, let's talk decreases. For this next section of our sweater, we are going to be working decreases at the neckline of our cardigan. And so when we're working on, say, the left side of the cardigan, we want the decreases to be worked moving left. And when we're on the right side of the cardigan, we want our decreases to be moving right to create a nice fabric. Now, once again, we are going to be working those decreases one stitch in from our side stitch to keep everything nice and clean and to keep a nice clean edge to our knitting. So just like we did when we worked our increases. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that's going to look like in order to create a left slanting decrease or a right slanting decrease. Now in order to get a nice slant, the idea is that you want this stitch to fall to the front of the decrease instead of having the decrease twisted. So in order to do that and create a slant one way or the other, we always want the outer stitch to be laying over the top of the inner stitch, whether we're on the right side or on the left side. 
So when we are working a decrease from the right side, we can go ahead and stitch one or knit one. And now we're going to be wanting this stitch to lay over the top of this stitch. So we're going to go ahead and slip, slip, then put these back onto our other needle. And now we're going to knit through the two stitches. And then when we pull through, you can see it's going to allow that first stitch here to come forward and lay over the top of the second stitch. And that's going to create that left slant. Let's go ahead and knit across the row. And then we can look at what a right slant stitch would look like. Now we are three stitches from the end of our row and we can go ahead and work that left slant stitch. Now on this one, if we slip, slip, knit, we're going to have this stitch fall over this one, which is not what we want. We want this outer stitch to fall over the top of the inner stitch, which will create the slant. So instead of slip, slip, knit, we're gonna go to the front here and simply knit two together. Pulling here and now as we can see, this side stitch is falling over the top of the second stitch. And now we can purl back across here and we'll demonstrate those two decreased stitches again. All right, let's These, work that again. Always doing our decrease one stitch in so that we can keep a nice smooth line on the outside for seaming up anything that we're adding to the sweater. In this case, we're going to be seaming up the front button band. So one stitch in and then slip, slip, knit. Knit one, slip, slip, add those stitches back to your needle, come around and allow that first stitch to fall in front of the back stitch. Knit across. All right, we have three stitches left. We're going to be working our slant that is slanting from the left to the right. So we're going to go over this stitch to the front of this stitch here, come through it front, and knit two together, allowing the front stitch to fall over the back stitch, and knit the last stitch. I will purl back across and then let's look at that one more time. Here we are again, back at the beginning, and we're going to knit one, slip, slip, and knit through. And then on our other side, when we get to three before, we're going to come around to the front of this last stitch, going through the front of the two stitches to knit two together. Knit one, slip, slip, get these back onto the back needle, knit, three before the end, skip this stitch, go to this stitch, come through the front of this stitch, through the front of the second stitch, knit two stitches together, and then knit your last stitch. And now let's take a look at what this is doing to our work. Now, you can see we have a nice clean edge on both sides as we're decreasing. Let's see if I can get a nice close up of that for you guys. And you can see how these outer stitches on both sides are laying over the front of our inner stitches and our fabric is continuing to come up nice and straight and flat. No bubbling, no twisting. 
This also keeps this initial knit stitch on our edges nice and clean, which will allow us to seam up any sides or in our case, add a button band and we'll be able to knit through that outer stitch without negatively impacting this decrease stitch and how nice this is looking here. All right, now that we have got our decreases started for the neckline of our beautiful cardigan, let's go ahead and move along in our instructions. Now we're gonna be working on the underarm shaping and as we work the underarm shaping and the neckline at the same time, we're going to go ahead and add our first color work section. In our sweater here, we're gonna be doing stripes. So the first stripes are gonna be worked simultaneously with this neckline shaping and with the underarm shaping where we will be utilizing those decrease stitches we just learned. So let's go ahead and pop over and see how we will be incorporating that secondary color, the red color for our stripes here. And we'll see how we carry along the main color along the sides so that we don't end up with quite so many tails that we have to weave in at the end. All right, my dears, let's talk color work. This next section, as we are decreasing our neckline, as well as working our underarm shaping, we are gonna be going ahead and adding our stripes, our initial stripes of color work before we do our rose motif. Now, this one is solid, so we're not gonna have to worry about carrying any types of yarn across the back of our work or work it, worry about intarsia work and what that means just yet. Instead, we're simply gonna be adding these stripes of color. Now, because these are thin stripes, we don't have to worry about cutting this yarn, our solid color yarn or our MC, our main color. We can go ahead and simply carry it up the sides. And what we'll do is we will twist it up the sides as we're going so that it remains in the fabric instead of having a loose flapping edge on the outside. But by doing that, by carrying our main color up as we're working through these stripes, we're not gonna have to worry about darning in extra ends and having to weave those in at the end. So for working these stripes, what we're gonna do is leave this main color off to the side here. We're gonna go through this first stitch like we're doing a regular row, grab our second color and have a little twist on it here. But we're not creating a knot, we're just doing a twist. We will then be able to work on our tension if we leave this open. So we are gonna leave a, a tail here that we will have to weave in, but we won't have to do two. We're gonna come to the second spot. Now we've got our main color and we're gonna tighten that down. Okay. And now if you don't want to have to weave this in later, what you can do is hold it behind your work. And as you knit through this, front row, we can go ahead and run it along the back of our knitting as we go. Moving over and under it. Okay, now you see I've run it across the back. I'm actually weaving it in as I go. And now I'm gonna go ahead and drop it. Now I've got this tail, but I can work a little on tension, but I don't have to worry about it hanging out at the end here, causing this stitch to be loose. And now I can knit through the rest of my row. We're going to go ahead and turn to the back of our work and purl. And now I'm here at the end of the row and I've done my two opposite colors here. And so now it's time to go back from this color work to my main color. So I'm gonna come back here and I'm going to just twist it up. I'm gonna hold this up here and allow this secondary color to fall behind. Give my fabric a little bit of a tug here. And now, once again, I have my two colors and I am going to go ahead and twist them and come up to the side to begin my second stripe of color work. Pull that main color down tight.
Here we are. Grab my yarn, give them a little twist, and then through the front. Twisted yarn, fold this secondary color down, give it a tug. And there we are, our two stripes of color work knit into our fabric. And we can see everything along our back edge is nice and smooth. And up along this side, we don't have any loose pieces that need to be woven in or that will be in the way. Instead, we can see a nice row of knit stitches all the way down. And there you have it. We have worked on learning our decrease stitches, the knit, slip slip knit, as well as the knit two together. And we've worked on adding our secondary color while carrying the main color up through the sides of the sweater as we work our two striped sections. I know I'm gonna get tackling those here in my house and I hope you have luck tackling that section at yours. When we come back for our next section, we're gonna be working on the color motif or the roses. Now the color motif is going to be worked in intarsia, which means we are not gonna be carrying our yarn all the way across. Instead, we're gonna be doing each one of our rose segments with individual small balls of yarn. And I will show you what that looks like in our very next video. And I will also review how you can do that at home. Thank you guys so, so much for joining me today and for working on our beautiful vintage knits. I'm getting very excited about how far along we have come. I know I'd love to be along further. I certainly took a pretty long break at my house because of summer and crazy family life things. And if you find that you're in the same position and you've got your work in progress just sitting in a quarter, go grab it out. We'll get working on them together and we'll start to get cozy with them as the weather starts to change. Thank you guys so much for being so patient with me as it has taken a while to get back to our beautiful knit. And thank you for joining me today. If you love vintage clothes, if you love costuming, if you love knitting, please hit that like and subscribe button. I would love to have you along with me here on my journey. Bye guys.